Kevin Pantazzi here. Uh, I was over at a seminar over in Czech Republic just last uh, weekend, and um, someone asked me a, a, an interesting question. Now, I'm a small guy, but he asked me um, how I got my hands so strong, because we were doing grappling techniques, and um, he was wondering, a uh, rather large individual, and he was wondering how my hands were so strong that I could affect it, and he, his hands couldn't, that were a much larger hand. And I just said, it's just the way you train. You know, when you use the um, 6G hands, they um, use the tendon strength, and they use um, a lot of strength to develop them and to ap apply them. So that's how it, it works, whether it's in grappling, whether it's in tuite. Tuite is one of my favorites. In fact, I have a, a video coming up um, on tuite uh, relatively soon. But um, uh, the tuites, um, uh, getting it done and doing it, uh, is just amazing, especially when you use the 6G hands. Now, uh, one of my favorite um, G hands, of course, is the single blade of grass. Okay, this single blade of grass, it tenses. Now, when you start to grab with it, okay, you're going to grab with these last three fingers. And you're also grabbing with the thumb compressing at the same time. So when you do that, you do it in a rolling fashion, okay, because the, the rotation of the... Uh, single blade of grass hand is this way for ap application. Now you can also see it this way, and you see this uh, performed a lot in Aikido in uh, a technique called Goku, okay, and that's a turning action. But in this action we're going to be rotating this way, and because you're tensing the, the small finger and into the middle finger, okay, and then using the, the wrist rotation, you're strengthening the tendons in through this area, in through here. So when you grab onto something, whether it be for the Goku this way, or whether it be for a torque this way, whether it be a neck, uh, an arm, whatever you're grabbing, um, you're going to have a very strong grip because it's not just muscle strength. Yes, the muscle strength uh, develops as well, but it's also going to be tendon strength. Okay. Now, when you're using um, other hands, uh, let's go into the um, the iron claw for example. Okay. When you're grabbing and you're pulling back, again, it's again a torquing action. Now, once the fingers have drawn in, that's muscular. Okay. And then when they torque back, that's tendon. All right. So you're strengthening the tendons. And I've written about this many times. Tendon strength is far superior to muscle strength. It's stronger. And it's going to enable you, especially in the hands, to develop a good, um, strong grip and uh, tearing ability, pressing co uh, ability, compression ability, and also striking ability, um, as we'll see later on. All right. Uh, the next hand uh, is the um, iron bone hand. And again, one of my personal favorites. I use this everywhere. Now, when you're striking with it, there's no real strength that's involved with that. You can strike down with this way and you can strike in with this way. All right, you don't want to strike like a ridge hand because if you do, you're going to tear your own tendon and that's what we're trying to strengthen. So anyway, um, when you're doing this, and this is the tuite I'll be using um, in the, the, the tuite film coming up that I just mentioned, uh, because we were working on a, a form called Saison. And Saison has a movement where the two hands come down and then circle around as a striking action. But as they're turning down, you have either two gokus, kind of hard to imagine you grabbing a guy by two wrists and turning down, or you're grabbing in using this hand. And you can go into finger locks, thumb locks, you can go right into gripping. You can use it as a Kota uh, uh, movement, developing that strength. But as you're striking with this, okay, what you're doing is you're pulling over. Now that first is musculature, okay? But then when you apply and you sink in, that's going to be um, the tendon, okay? Because once you've grabbed, once you've grabbed into that technique, 
technique, okay, in through here as an example, okay, once you've locked in and you start rotating it, now you go and bracing against the tendons because this thumb, once locked, okay, that's muscular strength locking, but once you start rotating, now you're, you're trying to maintain that as a lever, okay, and a fulcrum at the same time, so you're, you're turning against it, you're tightening the ligaments and the tendons, and that's the real strength of the hand. Um, that, that's a, a real uh, great hand uh, position to be using. Uh, even if you're doing the iron palm strike, okay, now you're not doing anything uh, except for tensing the muscles back here, but once you get to a certain point and you push in with your wrist dropping like this rotation should be, okay, then you're tensing the tendons as well, so, so you're even strengthening the back of the hand. And uh, the last hand, of course, being the blood pool hand coming in. Now, it all depends on how you apply this. Now, when you're doing it with a striking action, you're going to need the tendon strength because you don't want the joints to give out on you. Okay, it's not musculature that holds those joints tense. It's going to be your tendons. All right, now whether you're striking this way, like uh, a lot of Weichi practitioners uh, practice striking into the brachial plexus, um, that's one thing. If you're using it this way, of course, there's no tendon strength that's really involved except for keeping the wrist straight. Once you've pressed into this, okay, and you've, you've formed the hand, that's musculature, okay, once you're braced and you're, you're trying to lock it so the hand won't bend, that begins to strengthen the tendons. You can develop that also by doing uh, push-ups on the first two knuckles uh, using the blood pool hand. But when you're developing the tendons for the blood pool hand, you're developing it in a penetrating type of an action, okay, like the fingers digging in. And you can do this in several different ways. I, you, one of the, the things that I, I've shown before is grabbing onto the neck and sticking uh, back of the neck and then thrusting the fingers into the carotid sinus as an example. Okay, you can come up underneath the rib cage and cause a lot of pain and dysfunction on the uh, liver. Okay, and many other areas in the body. It's a use for penetrating in. But once you've formed that hand, okay, and uh, you don't have to bend it fully, okay, you can use it as a uh, more of a rounded type of an action, okay, and you start to push in, that is going to re uh, require some tendon strength. So again, to answer his questions, I use the 6G hands exclusively. Very rarely will I use a, a punching um, technique. Uh, I do use elbows, of course, a lot, but when I'm using, working with my hands, it, they, they've concentrated mainly on the 6G hands. And because I've been training them so long, they're natural, they get into the deeper structures, they're more penetrating, they have um, devastating abilities on the human anatomy, and that's why I prefer to use those hand positions and why they're there. So just a little idea on uh, how you can work with your 6G hands uh, to develop your hand strength. Also, uh, of course, the seizing exercises I did on my seizing videotape uh, that I'll put a link below so you could uh, get on uh, that and take a look at that if you're interested. So that's the answer to your question on how to develop hand strength.